Hi everybody, we've just started a new project now. We're going to be able, uh, creating a large dragon with wings that float right out and it's going to go in an alcove up high in a school and looking down at the children. Got a few concept images that we were working on and it's going to be a lot redder than that so it matches the, um, the primary colours of the school so it's going, it's going to be red and gold looking. Uh, I'm about to draw it out on the floor here and this is where we start. Maximum length of about three to three and a half meters long. And the head coming right down with the jaw and the eye. Nice big long neck on it. And a nice big arch for the back as well. Obviously that's just flat, but it will be in 3D eventually. And add wings as well, which come out to about 2.5 meters wide. So that's the start, let's get going. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's a definite dragon theme going on here. What with the Lincoln Dragon only a couple of videos ago, but hey, the life in a commercial studio. What comes in, comes in. This is the third instalment for the Lee Chapel School reception area. Two trees have already been created and put in place, and here, the pièce de résistance. Although originally intended to only be a three-part project, the real question is, is this gonna be the end, or is there more to come, time will tell. As well as for the enjoyment of everyone at the school, we'd love for you guys to enjoy at home as well. So here we are with the complete project video. <laughs> Silliness very much included, of course. Now, if you're wondering what sort of witchcraft is currently involved here, this is a handheld hot wire, which is being used to take off the bulk of the material. Aidan then starts using nail and wire brushes to begin carving by hand. These sorts of projects are great for utilising smaller pieces of polystyrene, offcuts and chunks that are otherwise difficult to utilise for other projects. And when it comes to creating the wings, you'll see this process even more so. All of the polystyrene pieces are first stuck together using a polyurethane expanding foam, pinned together and left to set. Although not always necessary, this is also an effective way of adding more material back onto the job if needed. We've actually got a Tool Time with Aiden video on our channel, so if you're just starting out with this form of sculpture, or generally interested to see more of how we make things and the tools we use, I've left a link in the description below. We should make a part two, really, as there's much more that we have to share with you guys. Some things, though, will always be kept secret. <coughs> Sticky back tinfoil. That's the sticky back foil right there. This is used to protect the polystyrene from the polyester resin going on the top. Sure, we could use an epoxy resin, but this will work out much more expensive for the client. And hey, it's much more fun luring all of you guys in with this shiny goodness. Going on now with the glass fibre and resin, we're giving this just a very thin shell so that it's as lightweight as possible to hang from the ceiling. As the wings still need to be created, by which I did mention that they're also very much going to be made from many, many offcuts, we've laminated the head at this stage so that we can sit the dragon on his nose without causing any damage whilst we work on everything else. shots of the school dragon. On the back wall there we've done a rough mock-up of the ceiling, the width and the height, just so we know that we're keeping everything within the boundaries 
It's great to make amendments during this stage, the polystyrene stage, as it's a bit trickier to make changes later on, considering we won't actually be able to offer this up until it's completely finished and brought to site. We've done loads of research online as to what makes a dragon, what makes a, a drake, a wyvern, and other kind of serpentine names. Um, we've opted to go for the, the two back legs where the front legs are actually, or the front arms rather, are actually the wings. Sort of like a, a bat or a more bird of prey, which I think is a wyvern as opposed to a dragon. I think a dragon's actually got four legs and two wings, but that's what we're going for. That's a very rough mock-up there of the sort of position the back legs are going to be expected to be in. But this is going to be a nice, dramatic piece of sculpture for the children to walk into right above the heads. But we try not to make it too mean looking. It's going to be painted a lovely bold red. Over here we have the tail and the sort of red that we're expecting the main body to be as well. And everything's just going to be accented with gold to bring out all the detail. Things like the underside of the neck and the tummy and the horns and all the spikes. To include a little dragon related pun, the excitement, as you can see, is off the scale. As well as keeping the fiberglass relatively thin, we're also removing as much polystyrene from the back of the sculpture to keep the weight down further. We're going to be adding a scaffold bar across the entire back of the dragon, and this will act as the main support for installation, rather than having the wings taking any of the dragon's weight. We're mixing up a batch of a water-based flexible concrete mix, which we're going to be applying across the whole surface. This will give an appropriate stony texture to the dragon and completely cover the texture of the fiberglass mat. Just in case any of the paintwork is scuffed, we're adding some red pigment to the concrete just so we're not going back to a white base layer. Now that we're moving on to the pretty artwork stages, I feel like a bit more of a how to train your dragon vibe is in order.
I mean, that montage just wasn't worth interrupting. I got a kick out of that one, I'll tell you. We're just going over the entire form, paying attention to any areas that need a little bit more work, and the final airbrush in detail. We'll then lacquer the whole of the artwork to lock everything down, and this is then ready to head off to the Lee Chapel School here in Basildon. It's one of those things where, sometimes it simply has to be said, but what a squad we have at the studio. Everyone you can see in this video at the moment is family, and I'm not talking about Vin Diesel's Fast and Furious family, I mean actually related, and though it's a shame that the studio and the team won't carry on forever, we certainly make the most of it right now, while we're all here. And you know, quite often it can be something as small and seemingly insignificant as seeing your name on a digger on the way to site to deliver a dragon, as someone very close to me reaffirmed the other day, it's the little things. Here on site, at the Lee Chapel School reception area, we're installing these metal plates and brackets that the rigging on the back of the dragon will sit and bolt into. This will be taking pretty much all of the sculpture's weight, I told Aiden to give it a wiggle, that's not quite what I meant, and eventually we'll tie cables from the dragon's back up to the ceiling in multiple places just as an added precaution. Though we have some final shots at the end of the video, Aiden later went back to the school to add some Harry Potter style glasses to the dragon to give him a slightly friendlier, more learned look. As mentioned earlier, this is the third project that we've created for this particular reception area, the first being a Jungle Book inspired tree, and the second a fantasy fairy tale tree in the opposite corner. If you haven't yet seen the creation videos for either of these, you can find the links in the YouTube description below. These have been a fantastic set of projects to work on for the Lee Chapel School, many thanks to which must go to one of our other family members, Mr Hines number 5. He's now a teacher at the school, and another big thank you of course to Miss Jackson, the head teacher. Your faith in us with a relatively carte blanche approach to each project has meant that we've really enjoyed creating something that will help bring the school entrance to life. We hope that all of the students, the staff and the parents get the same joy from the sculptures as we did creating them, and we'd love to know what else you have in mind for the future. To everyone watching online, we always love hearing what you guys think of our projects and our channel, so please feel free to drop a comment below, and by all means subscribe and give us a follow on social media. A big thank you to all of our patrons who support our projects and the creation of our videos, we love having you guys on board, and if you'd like to support our family run studio, you can find our Patreon details below. However big or small, it's greatly appreciated from all of us here at Sculpture Studios. Thank you very much for watching.